When my wife and I were taking down our Christmas decorations after last Christmas, one of the things that always annoys me happened yet again. There were two strings of fairy lights and they had got totally confused with one another and it took me a good 10 minutes to disentangle them so that we could put them safely away so that no doubt they will come out next Christmas and get tangled up again. Now, often, of course, when fairy lights get tangled, it just makes it all the prettier, but it's a bit of a nuisance when you're trying to sort it out. Now, in this passage in Mark 7, there are two issues which have got thoroughly entangled in the way that fairy lights, when you take them off a Christmas tree, sometimes do. One of the issues is about cleanness and uncleanness. As Mark explains, and the fact that he explains it indicates that most of his readers probably weren't themselves Jews, the Jewish traditions had a great deal of teaching about purity. Uh, after all, the Jews had come through that long period in the wilderness when you wanted to be very careful about what you ate and what you didn't eat and how clean you kept your hands and the hands of your children and so on. Otherwise, whole families could have been wiped out with nasty diseases or whatever. So these purity laws had become a sign and symbol of Jewish identity and they were hugely important as a marker particularly then when many Jews lived out in the wider pagan world in Jesus' day. And for them, no, we are Jews, we do not eat this, we only eat that. These, this was a way of saying, this is who we are. We are the people who are loyal to God. The other issue that's got, as it were, tangled up with that, like the fairy lights in Mark's telling of the story, is the issue of traditions that the Jewish people had over the years developed all sorts of very careful teachings, not just this is what the Bible itself says, but if we're gonna keep that, then we need to do this as well, and that probably means we better do the other, and so it went on, and the traditions had grown to the point where sometimes the traditions mattered, it seemed far more than the Bible itself. And so Jesus addresses those two issues together, as it were, and then, slightly disentangling them, he begins with the tradition one, that he says, you have a fine way of honoring God's word, you're setting it aside in order to keep your tradition. But then he goes for the one which is central to it, which is about purity. And he says, listen, it isn't what goes into you that makes you unclean, it's what comes out of you that makes you unclean. And that's like a riddle, they didn't understand it. It's only when they go off the street and into the house that his disciples ask him what on earth he was talking about and he explains it to them and then we see why it was that he couldn't actually say it out on the street uh, either because there might have been a riot because what he meant was that actually eating this sort of food or that sort of food isn't the thing that makes you clean or unclean. What is he doing? Setting aside all those, yes, traditions? Well, it looks like it, because now God's people is not only going to be a worldwide people, not just this one family of Israel. God's people are going to be people whose hearts have had that strange renewal operation done on them so that they won't be producing all this uncleanness. They will be producing that which God longs to see. God has his expectations for how we should be, and that's what the law was pointing towards. The expectations of the Jewish people of Jesus' day were pointing in the right direction, but Jesus was doing something totally new, which actually got right to the heart of what it was that God had wanted all along.